Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Happy to the, or I guess not happy, but well, happy leap day. I was getting ahead of myself, but welcome to this very special edition of the Creo Spark webinar series. Special in that it is the first time we've ever gotten to do it on leap day. Um, in all the years we've been doing it, it happens to fall on that one day that only falls on a day four times or every four, uh, once every four years. Happy to have you all here, but welcome to this episode of the Creo Spark webinar series. It's today's offering of navigating Microsoft Copilot. Power Platform, AI Readiness, and the Art of What's Possible. My name is Michael Wells. As always, I am here as your host. I am a customer experience manager here at CreoSpark. It's my pleasure, my honor, my privilege to welcome you all here today. I hope you all are in for, uh, I hope you're all prepared for a fun time. We've got a lot to go through talking about uh, Copilot in the Power Platform, all the stuff that goes into it. We've got a lot to talk about. Um, so let's get to it, shall we? If you can go to the next slide, please. we got a lot that we're going to get through today. So I'm going to move us right along just a little bit. There we go. So the agenda for today, we're going to go through a little housekeeping, introduce your speakers in just a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about ROI insights. We're going to talk a little bit about features, benefits, and possibilities, co-pilot readiness and best practices, governance and security considerations. And of course, as always, at the end, we leave time for questions and answers. I hope there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of a nice group of about 45, 46 people here today. Let's, uh, let's keep those questions coming. Here we go. All right. Uh, housekeeping, here we go. Uh, if you've got questions, you've got a couple options here. There is a questions tab. If you are on the desktop version, the desktop app version of GoToWebinar, there is a questions tab that pops out. Put your questions in there. I'll be following along. I will get those to our speakers as I can. If I can't get to it in the moment, we will uh, make sure we get to it in that Q&A part of the, of the day at the end of the hour. Um, Yes, uh, yeah, oh, and if you're on the browser version, there should be a little chat bubble with a question mark in it. That's where you're gonna put your questions uh, if you're on the browser version of that. Uh, next, we'll have some resources for you at the end, some handouts, there's a handouts panel um, for you to grab those couple of things that we'll hand you at the end of the day, talking about some of the stuff we've talked about today. Make sure you grab those. Those are exclusive for you all who are here today joining us live. So we wanna make sure you are uh, given those. Next, we do record this session. So if you wanna go back, uh, and, and review something. If you want to go back and check your notes on something, maybe just replay something, uh, maybe just come back and just point at my face and go, ha ha, look at that guy. That's okay, do it. The recording will be out next week. Um, we'll email that to you guys and you can take a look at that. Also at the end, we are going to have a survey. Uh, we, we, we here at CreoSpark webinar series like to make sure we're always giving you guys the best product possible, keeping, uh, keeping you on your toes and talking about the most uh, most interesting topics that we can. So if you want to suggest a topic or give us some feedback about what you like, what you didn't like, any of that, please fill out that survey at the end. You may be entered into a chance to win something. Put you up the day to the end to figure out what that is. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Uh, lots of stuff going on today, y'all. We're just happy to have you all here. Great group of 53 people. Love to hear that. Hey, if you've never joined us before here, we are CreoSpark. We work all in and around the Microsoft universe, touching every corner and puzzle piece that Microsoft has to offer, all in pursuit of the ideal digital employee experience. Uh, if, you've been, if you've been with us for a long time, you know that uh, one of our main offices is in Davis, California, about 20 minutes south of Sacramento. That's where I'm coming in from today. We've got our, uh, our Microsoft regional director here. We've got uh, uh, our SharePoint team Ziva experts uh, here as well. Uh, and then our other our other main uh, hub, so to speak, is in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We've got a multidisciplinary team of pros there. We've got a Microsoft MVP there. We are covering all across North America. As soon as we can get somebody uh, to, to start working in Mexico, we'll have all North America covered, and I'll be never seen not on a beach ever again. But that's just a little bit about us. Um, we cover everything, like I said. Uh, we do we focus what we do in three, in three main pieces, right? Modern work, process transformation, secure cloud. Uh, various pieces of the Microsoft spectrum. Happy to tell you guys all about that another time. That's just a little bit about what we do. Go to the next slide, please. I see a question coming in the chat. Do we get a certificate of attendance? We don't do certificates of attendance here, unfortunately. You just get the the sheer pride of knowing you were here live. So we appreciate you being here. Unfortunately, we don't do a, a certificate though. And hey, as always, these, we'd like to start off the little uh, audience participation. And by that, I mean, we've, we've got a poll. We've got a couple polls we're gonna do today. Uh, it's gonna launch up on your screen, select your answer, and then we'll, we'll look at the results after. So we're gonna launch this first one, which, which, uh, should be, which of the Power Platform apps do you use the most often? Power Automate, Power Pages, Power BI, Copilot Studio, or I've got the power to not know this platform. Let us know which one you like to use, uh, which one you use most often. Obviously, not all of them are on here. Um, had to get my little joke in there at the end. Uh, very interesting results. Okay, it makes a lot of sense here. I see a lot of people coming in for Power Automate right now, and a good chunk for Power BI too. Very, very nice. Okay, uh, a lot of people putting their votes in. I appreciate you all. Seventy-one percent, seventy-three percent have voted. 
That is a great number. Uh, about five, ten more sec, five, seven more seconds. Get your votes in, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the results are. Very cool stuff uh, coming out of this. All right, let's go ahead and close that one, and I will launch and share the results with you guys. As you can see, 59% of you like to use Power Automate the most. About 5% say Power Pages. Very cool with how new Power Pages, how new Power Pages is. It's honestly a higher percentage than I thought. 25% of you said Power BI. Uh, nobody said Copilot Studio, so uh, I guess you've come to the right place today to learn all about it. And then 11% of you are my kind of people who have got the power to not know this platform. Appreciate you guys uh, going in with that. Okay. We are going to get rid of that. And we've got a second poll. We usually we do one, but we've got a second poll today. We had a lot of things we wanted to talk to you guys about. So I'm gonna launch a second one here. Same thing, which Copilot feature are you most excited to explore in the Power Platform? There's no joke answer on this one, guys. So we actually do wanna know. Automatic report creation, enhancing chatbots with Copilot, streamlining workflow automation, leveraging AI models in your apps or creating Power Apps automatically. Let us know what you're most excited about. We have a lot of stuff to do with Copilot. There's so much to do. The only thing it can't do is make you breakfast in the morning. And hey, who knows? Maybe they're working on that. We'll see. You never know. Uh, a lot of interesting results coming in. Lori loves seeing that. <clears throat> Thank you so much, guys. About 60% of you have voted so far. Appreciate that. Another about five, 10 seconds to get your answers in, guys. Uh, and then we'll, we'll review this as well. Lots of good answers coming in. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, three, two, one. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'll share that one with you guys. 16% said automatic report creation. 5% said enhancing chatbots with Copilot. 25% said streamlining workflow automation, 34% said leveraging AI models in your apps, and 20% said creating power apps automatically. There is a pretty wide spectrum of what people are most excited about, and we like to hear it. We like to see it. That gives us an idea of where we're going for today. Thank you for participating in those polls. We always love getting an idea of where everybody's at. If you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, we are moving right along here, right along to introductions. You, you get to stop listening from me and listen from do the real expert today. Let me introduce you to our two speakers for today. First, he is a Microsoft MPP. He is the CTO of our company. He is the guy who just popped up on the screen, whatever side he just popped in on for you. He is the one, the only Mr. New Res. Okay, Ms. Rez, how are you doing this morning, sir? Good, Michael. Thanks for waking up, everybody. On yeah, I do what I can. Do what I can. Uh, next, coming on up, she is our business applications practice lead. She is certified, uh, Microsoft certified with a degree in information technology, and she's a pretty musical gal herself. She's gonna pop up on one of the sides of me somewhere else. She is the one, she is the only, Miss Crystal Amura. Crystal, how are you doing Hi, today, Crystal? Everyone. Good, good, how are you? I'm doing well. It's good to have you two here today. Uh, have some fun teaching everyone about Copilot. Okay, perfect. Um, let's go to the next slide, Crystal. Yeah, so I'll start out for this webinar today. So why are we all here today? We are really here to talk about Copilot and the Power Platform. If you didn't know already, I'm sure you did, but Copilot is Microsoft's revolutionary flagship AI powered tool for Microsoft 365 and the Power Platform. Although I would guess in the future, that in fact all Microsoft Cloud offerings will have some sort of Copilot built into them. But today we're here for the Power Platform specifically. And for the Power Platform, Copilot is designed to streamline the app, the bot, the data, the workflow development process, processing um, while enhancing the intelligence of your applications. All the Copilots and generative AI features within the Microsoft Power Platform and Dynamics 365 are gonna help you build apps, flows, chatbots, help you analyze your data, summarize information, reply to your messages, and generate ideas. And today's webinar is gonna take you through the fundamentals of Copilot and its integration with Power Apps, Power Automate, Copilot Studio, Power Pages, Dataverse, and AI Builder. Let's go to the next slide, please, Crystal. So let's talk about the ROI for a, for a second. Have a look at all these stats that you see. And the fact of the matter is the world is changing and this is mainly due to the speed at which technology is advancing. And there's a real potential for meaningful impact and organizations like you all on the line have the opportunity to lead that AI transformation. How is your organization gonna seize the full potential of AI while safeguarding your business, your data, your employees, and while speeding up that whole app and workflow development process that your IT and your citizen developers are doing right now. According to Gartner, the percentage of the world's data produced by generative AI is gonna jump from 
under 1% in 2021 to at least 10% in 2025. And over 65% of app development activity is gonna all be low code by 2024. And the world's choice for an enterprise low code development system is in fact the Microsoft Power Platform. The business case for using low code tools like the Power Platform and AI is right there. Um, and if you don't grasp it, you're gonna be falling behind um, your competitors. And if you're not adopting these low code tools, you're not gonna be taking advantage of the tools for your whole app development process. More than 126,000 organizations right now already are already using Copilot and the Power Platform together to date. And Power Apps is still the market leader in low code, no code development, now with over 20 million monthly active users. Uh, and there's a, up to a 40% year over year growth. And you can see all the stats and ROI right here on the screen on the right hand side, which shows you how the Power Platform and Copilot together are gonna optimize the way you're building your workflows, the way you're building your apps with all the velocity and the more likely to succeed uh, statistics you see there. Crystal, I'm gonna pass it off to you to talk a little bit about the Power Platform now. Yeah, wow, it's about 20 million monthly active users, that's, that's a lot. Um, there's absolutely a wave of exciting advancements, especially those organizations that are really diving into these technologies and they all already seeing and going to see more remarkable transformations. But I just wanna share with you one thing I've read this morning, which made me smile. Um, it says, with AI co-pilot in Power Platform, English is now considered a programming language which I think is true because everyone can just use natural language to build apps or websites. And as we know, Power Platform, it has been a game changer for its low code and no code capabilities, development tools. Already it's been instrumental in helping a lot of organizations boost their development time and really streamline their operations. And now with AI, the potential is really truly limitless. It opens a lot of possibilities for reimagining everything from business strategies to IT infrastructure to the very culture of development teams. And really, Copilot is everywhere in the Microsoft Cloud. AI isn't just confined to specialized applications anymore. It becomes much more inclusive, allowing a diverse range of users to harness its power to address their unique needs and challenges. And by embracing the built-in AI in the tools you already use, you can radically accelerate developer and employee productivity and creativity across your entire organization. And I've said this before, it's about empowering everyone to reach new heights of efficiency and innovation. And these are the co-pilot solutions that Microsoft is bringing to market across the Microsoft Cloud. You see on the screen, there's Dynamics 365 uh, Copilot, which is really designed to transform your core business functions like sales, service, marketing, and more. And then of course, the Copilot in Power Platform, which is uh, our main focus for today. Um, and in a bit, I'm going to do a live demo of the Copilot capabilities and some of the tools in Power Platform, so stay tuned for that. But also, we also have Microsoft Sales Copilot, which is designed to maximize productivity and close more deals. And I've seen this Copilot for Sales includes Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, and it also connects with your CRM platform to bring sales insights and next generation AI into the flow of work. Now, Microsoft 365 Copilot, one of my personal favorites, this is designed to empower knowledge workers within the apps they, they use every day, such as Excel, Word, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, and it's for everyone who uses these apps in a daily basis, including students. I've actually um, showed Copilot uh, in PowerPoint to my kids because my 10 and 12 year old use it, it at school and then they don't have licenses right now, but they were so amazed on how it easily created a full presentation for them. Um, but of course, as everyone else, we need to remind everyone about our responsibility, having all this power in our hands to make sure, of course, that we are using this responsibly. Now, before we move on to the live demo, uh, we wanted to show you some use cases and how you can use Copilot for each Power Platform tools and its benefits. Because 
Copilot can actually help you generate formulas. You don't need to have an extensive coding knowledge in order for you to build apps or flows for your automations. Now, if you are one of the people who are very interested to learn and work on Power BI reports, you don't need to have an extensive knowledge on how to write DAX queries because you can easily ask Copilot to help you with that. You also don't need to have um, HTML or CSS knowledge to build a website because again, Copilot is here to assist you. You can ask Copilot to create the site for you, add pages and forms, and even write the content for your site. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about and hopefully I can show you a lot of the capabilities in 15 minutes. Um, so let's uh, move to the other window. I have here my browser. So for this demo, imagine that we're going to create a grant application management app for a municipal institution. Okay, let's start with Power Apps. Now I have here, I'm in my make.powerapps.com. This is the maker portal. So I'm just gonna ask Copilot to build a grant applications app for me. And now once you hit that send icon, that uh, Copilot send button, it automatically creates a table for you with what Copilot thinks you'll need, like different columns about grant. Now you'll have, of course, a chance to review the columns if you think so. You have it generated an application ID, application name, the organization, there's application date, status, and say, for example, you want to have like um, a column that. Uh, has choices of what type of grant it needs. Um, users can select, say, add a grant type column with choices such as startup, business, entrepreneurship, and mentorship. I can just ask Copilot on that. Um, and for example, at some point, oh, you want to add more options to that. Let's see if it generated it. So as you see, if you go here and view columns, you actually can see that it successfully added all those choices. Now, say for example, you want to add more, you just say add items to the grant type column and put in the choices here in a comma separated way. And it should also update the same column. As you see, there's an additional three items in there. Um, now, um, you can also do like add an email column because I, I want to record that email uh, email address of the one who's applying for a grant. S simply just say add an email column and it should give you some changes here with sample data. Now, if you want to, maybe I want to add a multi-text column for description just for uh, additional information when they're doing the application. I can ask Copilot, I want to add that. Um, and then maybe um, I want to generate more sample data. So I'm just going to say add eight sample data records to what I'm doing right now. And it should add additional data. All right. And it added more. Um, for example, you get stuck, you don't know how Copilot really works. You can actually just type in, give me suggestions, and Copilot will, um, you know, provide some suggestions of what you can still do on on your on your existing table right now. So there are different um, things that you that um, it suggested you. So you can just click on that, and um, Copilot will do that for you. Now, for example, I'm happy about this table. I'm just gonna hit the create app and now what it's doing is that copilot is creating the canvas app for you and it's going to take a few minutes but i actually have another tab here which i prepared to make sure this is going to be um, a smooth live demo so here is an, another example of app that um, copilot generated for me now here's the thing you'll see you see here if i exit this 
um, there's this co-pilot icon. This is called um, in-app co-pilot within Canvas app. Now, what it can do is there's a lot of things it can also do, like you see this suggestions. These are the things you can do to help you enhance your Canvas app more. And you can just say, add an email screen. It, it will automatically generate screens for your emails with built-in functionalities. Um, let's wait. I'll, I'll show you what, what I mean by built-in functionality. Okay, so now it's generating the email screen. And if I click on the send button, it actually have the um, the functionality functionality to send the email. Let me just maybe minimize that a little bit. So if you click on the button, it actually has it consists of um, that simple functionality to, to send your email. So that's built in too. Um, what else you can do? You can also do um, you can also use Copilot to help with conditional formatting or formulas. For example, I want to uh, let me go back to the main screen. Again, this is just an example. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Copilot to add a, a status label. And then we're going to do some conditional formatting, again, asking Copilot to assist us in applying some um, conditional formatting. OK, now it's generating the status label. Oops, let me just go back to that. Did I just, let's redo that. Oh, it's here. It's right here. Let me just move it down here. And here you see there's another co-pilot um, icon. So I'll just click that and go to conditional formatting. And right away, it would it will prompt you uh, the co-pilot uh, conditional formatting ideas, and it's asking what do you want to do with the status label. So I'm just gonna ask um, set this set color to red if selected status, which is the status, um, is rejected. L set color to blue. Let's see if it's gonna give us um, a correct suggestion. So when, once you first experience Copilot, it's a little bit tricky at first. Um, I think that the key thing here is to make sure to be specific as much as possible. So you see here, um, it generated the formula if text status selected that value equals rejected, um, color that red, comma, color that blue. I think this is the right formula. Um, and then I'll apply that. Let's see how that goes. So you see it's spending, so it's color blue. Um, if I play this and I select a different record, that's approved, so it's still blue, that's rejected, so it's it's red. So again, you can use Copilot in adding components in your Canvas app and even adding formulas or conditional formatting. Now, if you um, click on the refresh button on your Copilot screen, it actually gives you more um, suggestions of what you what else you can do with Copilot. And now I'm just adding a screen because I want to show you something really cool. Because aside from the in-app Copilot, um, you're all, all, also have um, a cap there's also a capability to add a Copilot control in your Power Apps. So see, I'm here in the new screen. I'm just going to add a Copilot control. Um, I turned on the modern controls just so you know it's in the settings. But if I click on Copilot, it's here. There, it's currently in preview right now. But you see, um, this one you can add directly to your Canvas app so users can use it as well. Um, and right after you add it, it's going to ask you what tables you want um, to use as a data source. So Copilot can read it to that table. Just give it a few seconds and now I'm just going to use the same grant applications system stable that um, I'm using in this app and it will automatically connect that data source I'm just going to stretch that a little bit 
and let's see, let's try it out. So here I'm gonna ask who applied for startup business grant. See how that goes. So it's reading on the table you connected it with um, and it's going to give you, as, as you see, it gives you the answer that um, Joe John Doe with application ID it applied for a startup business grant. Now, what you see here is Canvas app, but similarly in model driven app, there's also a co-pilot control, which is available here for you. There's an icon over here. So this is a model driven apps. Um, it's also showing the tables that, I, that I'm using in the Canvas app. If I ask the same questions, it's going to generate some answers for you. It's a little bit different right now. You see um, it's actually giving you a link to the record. And then when you click that record, it redirects you to the form itself of the records. So that is model-driven apps and Canvas app. Um, so let's move forward. And maybe I want to show you the Power Automate, the co-pilot in Power Automate. Now, the most common feedback I would get from people who have tried Copilot for Power Automate is that it's not working as they expected it to work. Now, again, the key here is be as specific as possible. You want to be able to ask specific scenario and action in your prompt. For example, instead of saying, I want to post a Teams message, say something like, like this. When a contact is created, I want to post a message to Teams channel. So let's see how that goes. So automatically it gives you suggestions. Again, you can act you can actually regenerate the same um, the same question, the same prompt by just clicking uh, on this isn't what I'm looking for and it's going to give you another suggestion. You're also free to you know modify your prompt just so until you um, until you're happy with what um, Copilot suggested for you. Now, I think I'm happy with this. I'm just going to click on next. It automatically um, connects, uh, create the, the connections, and then I'm going to uh, click on create flow. And again, similar with the Canvas app, it automatically uh, create the flow for you. Now, as you can see, there are invalid parameters here. You know, again, this is a low code development tool, so you can just click on here and fill it up. But if you want to keep using Copilot, there's always, um, you know, you can always use um, specific prompts to help you with that. As you see, I said, use contacts table on trigger. If you click this, it actually um, uh, selected the, the contacts table automatically. Now, for, for the Teams channel, I want to ask Copilot um, posts. A new contact was created on Confoso team general channels. You see that that's very specific. I mentioned the channel, I mentioned the team, and let's see how that goes. It didn't work, but again, uh, this is going to be, you know what, let's, let's try again, because this is a live demo, so I kind of expect that this is going to happen, but let's try again. See if it automatically set the proper team and channel. If it doesn't work, okay, it, it did. So there's a Contoso channel. Maybe I'll just reselect this to make sure it's the correct one. But you know, if you have a ton of channels and you want to be, you know, to to um, simplify how you create your automations, just use Copilot. But again, this is a low-code, no-code tool, so you'll feel feel free to just click on it and reselect the right um, uh, tables that you need. Let me just reselect this to make sure this is selected properly. And it's sorry, my my screen is frozen, but but that's it. That's it for Copilot for Power Automate. Now. Aside from this, 
while I'm typing this. Aside from this, you can also ask Copilot to help you add condition to your flow or add other new actions. And it can also help you format text or days, just like what we did in Canvas apps. Um, it can suggest or generate expression formulas that you can start with when you're working with some complex logics in your flow. Um, hey, Crystal, I've uh, got a couple of questions yeah. came in if you want to if yep. we can just put them in real quick there. Quick round robin of questions. Thank you, everybody, for throwing your questions in there. Uh, okay, starting at the top. Once Copilot creates a column, can a maker manually edit the created cable? Yes, definitely. But you have to uh, finish your Copilot um, steps for uh, at first. But definitely, if you go back to your Power Apps Maker portal, um, and you are in the right environment, make, make sure you're in the right environment. Once that Copilot created all your Canvas apps and your tables, you can actually see it here in the tables list. Um, and add more columns as you go, modify some columns that you don't need, maybe remove something that you don't need. Um, you know, as you learn more about your, your data, you can do so by just going to the back to Power Apps Maker portal and go to the table, search for table, and yeah, you can do the customization in here. Excellent. Thank you, Crystal. Appreciate that. All right, next question. How do we know if we have Copilot now? Is it free? I believe it is free for Power Platform. It's available right now one, um, as long as you are in the United States region, but you can correct me, Res, if I'm wrong. But if your environment stays right now in uh, United States, you have that capability to use Copilot. Yeah, at least for the Power Platform, but um, you're able to purchase the rest of the Copilot apps with, by purchasing the licensing for uh, Microsoft 365. If you want that Copilot, but Power Platform specific, you need the per app or per user licensing for the type of power platform we're going to get to that in a few minutes as well yep that was another question is someone asking if it's possible to go over licensing um and we're going to go over that uh, a little later in the session so hold tight on that thank you guys and then the last question here and then i'll, I'll stop uh, I'll stop um holding y'all hostage can copilot rename power apps controls uh containers forms text boxes etc based on telling it a naming convention i.e tell copilot rename each control starting with a prefix of I am. I have question. not tried that. Yeah, I have not tried that, but that would be a nice um, experiment to do, to explore it further. But yeah, I've been doing different types of tests to make it fail, you know, and try to really discover what it can do. Um, but that's a fun thing to, to, to try out. Yeah, definitely. All right, that's the end of that round of questions, guys. Back to it. All right. Um, well, let me move on to the power pages just so I can show you how Copilot is um, uh, can work with power pages. Uh, so this one is what I'm really excited about. Imagine being able to create a website with the help of an AI assistant. I've been keeping tabs on power pages and I've had experience working on a project with its previous version. And let me tell you, Diving into a content management system like that can be a bit overwhelming with all of its different components. But here's the game changer. Now they've got their own styling workspace, data workspace, and all wrapped up in a local development tool. And on top of that, a co-pilot that can assist you seriously with these tools at your fingertips, you can boost development time and have working website in no time. And now let's try it out together Again, we're uh, doing the same use case. I'm going to ask, I, I'm here at the make that power pages.microsoft.com. If you notice that I'm in a different portal right now, I'm going to ask Copilot to build a grant application site. It's going to show us to, uh, it's going to show us a template um, right after this is validated. So here, um, Copilot wants you to pick a site layout that meets your needs. Again, there's a simple button, like a, uh, a button on uh, below to help you regenerate another theme. But for me, I'm happy with this one. So I'm just going to say next. Um, there are other suggestions for what pages you want to add in your website. 
So I said, I'm going to select about us and contact us and maybe the FAQ page, and then I'm done. Again, similar with Canvas app, for Power Apps, Power Automate, the Copilot is trying to generate that Power Pages for us. So it's gonna take a few minutes, but again, I'm ready because I have uh, another Power Pages here that um, I prepared just in case, since this is a live demo, but I forgot to open that. So it's gonna take a little while, but if you have any other questions, um, let us know. We we'll have to answer that. Let's see. So it looks like Copilot is getting things ready. Same as the one that I'm trying to open. But what I wanted to do with this Power Pages, I want to um, ask Copilot if it can gener generate a color theme using blue colors. That's the thing I want to ask. Because when you write, when, you, when Copilot creates your Power Pages, look at this. There's the in-app Copilot once again. It's trying to load the pages. But I'm going to ask Copilot right now. Um, to generate a color theme for me using blue colors. And let's see what it does. Working on it. All right. So if you feel like this is the color theme you would like, just feel free and apply the theme. If you want to try again, it's actually just uh, resending the same prompt for. Um, yeah, okay, that, I, I clicked that. So it's again, uh, regenerating the same and it's giving you another suggestion. If, I'm ha if you're happy with that, just click on apply theme and it automatically applies to your uh, power page. Now, I wanted to add a registration page so that users can um, go to that page to register and access the, the content of your website. Um, and I just asked Copilot add a registration page, and now it's trying to generate um, the page for us. Let's see. All right, now it's loading the page. Now the next thing I wanted to show you is how you can use Copilot to generate text. Um, let me just go back. What while this is loading, let me let me you know, discard. Uh, continue review okay you see if this for example you wanted more content on this text you can click on this text oh keep it click on keep it continue review keep it all right now you you wanted to revise this wording in your website um, and then here when you click that text you have access to the copilot again and say rewrite, and it actually generates you um, a different wording, uh, re rephrasing what you you ask it to do. If you want to change the tone to maybe casual, again, it gives you another suggestion. If you want to use this, you can just replace text, and it will automatically update the text that you selected. There's another thing um, Copilot can do. I'm trying to um, make sure I am. Um, I still have some time. Um, say, for example, you want to add a form on this. For example, um, you can ask Copilot directly to add the form. Uh, another way is, for example, you added a section here, and you want to add a form here. Say one column. Um, and you want to add a form here. Uh, what it prompts you now, if you yeah, okay, so I click on add a form. What it prompts you now is another copilot capability. Um, if you need an assistance to create uh, for copilot to create a form for you, this is where you're going to describe it. Uh, right now it's um, it's blank, but I can say user user registration form. It automatically generates again those fields with some of the things that Copilot thinks you would need to ask uh, from your user. 
if you want to remove um, some of the fields here, like for example, subscription, just tell Copilot remove subscription. And again, Copilot will um, do exactly what you ask it to do. There was a problem with that. Okay, now it's not working. Let me resend that. Start over. Okay, let's try that again. Say remove user ID. Let's see if it's working. Again, it doesn't work. Again, it's live demo, so forgive me if it's not working. But um, those simple actions, uh, Copilot should be able to do that for you. But I think that's it. Uh, that's, the, that's the end of my live demo. I'm going to show you a few more slides because um, there's few things that, you know, Copilot can do within your Power Apps. Now, here is an example. This is a screenshot of an, um, a Canvas app, which is actually uh, created just by uploading an Excel table. Now, with AI, Power Apps can recognize column formats and inputs in your um, Excel table and actually generate it as a Dataverse table. Now, once you do that, you can use this to create your Canvas apps. Uh, the same thing with how you did it, how we did it uh, earlier today. Um, but this is another thing that you can do with Copilot. This is Copilot for Power BI. Again, you don't need to have extensive knowledge with DAX queries, because if you have the Copilot enabled with your Power BI, you can actually ask Copilot to help you write a formula and just describe, as you can see in the screen to, um, right now, it's uh, you just ask it to ro rolling 10-day average of inspection. When you submit that, it actually gives you a docs um, formula for you to use. Um, and I think that's it for me, Res. Crystal, you get to do all the fun stuff and you leave the governance and the licensing for me, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's, I, have, let's... I have to leave the best for you. The best yeah. topic. <laughs> you gotta gotta put the MVP to work. Yeah. Yes. Um, great. If you can go to the next slide, Crystal. So let's talk a little bit about now about some best practices for engaging with Copilot for the Power Platform. Um, and we'll break it down into four buckets, strategy and vision, admin and governance, uh, nurture and educate, and support. So um, from a strategy and vision perspective, the first thing you want to do is clearly outline the roles of the different stakeholders that are going to be involved in that Power Platform adoption. Identify those who are going to be using Copilot and their responsibility. And throughout this process, what you want to do is consider roles that analyze or work with the Power Platform every day, like your citizen developers, like your SMEs, like your business analysts, um, like the business. Uh, next, you want to define your business outcomes, right? Set your specific goals for Copilot adoption. Try to understand what you're trying to achieve by leveraging this AI tool. You know, whether it's improving app development speed, enhancing code quality, getting the formulas right, you know, optimizing the use of Excel or fostering collaboration. You know, you want to define your desired outcomes first. Next, uh, on the admin and governance side, you, what you want to do is implement governance policies to ensure the responsible use of Copilot. Define guidelines for code quality, security, compliance. You want to educate makers on the best practices and guardrails to follow when using Copilot. Next, you want to uh, concentrate on your environments. And if your environment is hosted in a region where Copilot features are not fully available, enable data movement across regions. Uh, consent to the terms of use in the Power Platform Admin Center to allow this Copilot function functionality across the organization. And then you also want to ensure the appropriate data loss prevention policies are in place with your connectors and your indexes and allow that to be in use with Copilot capabilities and Copilot Studio in itself. Uh, next, from a nurture and educate perspective, you want to foster this thriving internal community around Pilot, uh, around Copilot. You want to do things like organize workshops, hackathons, 
knowledge sharing session. So you can encourage everyone um, like your makers, like your citizen developers to collaborate, to share co-pilot tips and learn from each other. And then lastly, from a nurture and educate perspective, you wanna provide templates and guidelines specific to co-pilot usage. You wanna educate your makers on how to leverage co-pilot effectively. You wanna highlight the benefits and encourage adoption within your organization. And as simple as the, the simple tips that Crystal gave you from her experience when using it, when adding a field to a table, like we saw, one, in one case it didn't work, but maybe if you said add the user ID field to this table, it might be able to figure it out. And Microsoft is trying its best to kind of embed all these capabilities, but there's going to be some specific prompts that work, will work better. And there's good um, techniques and tips that everybody will have on using those prompts. Lastly, from a support perspective, think about that ongoing support, supporting strategy. Establish that strategy for continuous support. Um, consider making education, troubleshooting assistance, and address any challenges related to Copilot within some sort of ticketing system and some sort of community that can support with that and have these champions support everyone. We here at CreoSpark have this, we have two programs called our excellence programs, one specifically for co-pilot and AI, as well as one for citizen development um, usage of the Power Platform. And that kind of creates this community which is gonna help and this training which is gonna help everybody more optimally create their apps and workflows. Uh, Crystal, if you can go to the next slide. Let's take a step back and talk. Uh, go back to the licensing um, question. So everybody asks um, co-pilot licensing. So at the beginning, all of their uh, at the beginning when Crystal showed you all of the different co-pilot offerings, Microsoft is adding more and more to each one of its cloud services. But from a Microsoft 365 perspective, if you're using Word or Excel or Teams, there is a, a specific licensing available. Before it was only available to organizations with 300 and above, but now they've made it available to everybody. So there is a price listed for those, but for Copilot, for Power Platform specifically, um, the license depends upon the service you're using. So if you're creating a, um, if you want to leverage that demo that Crystal did on the, creating a Power Apps for a grant, management system, then you usually have to have a per user or per app or concurrent users via consumption Azure license within Azure. So there's a whole bunch of different models on licensing depending on the service you're using. If you're using Power Pages, then there's another licensing you gotta purchase. If you're using it for Copilot Studio, which is formerly Power Virtual Agents, there's another set of licensing you gotta use. So the question is not, you don't, you don't just pay once and you get all of the Copilot functionality, it all depends on the type of service you're using within the Power Platform, and then you have to follow, um, Microsoft has some publishing licensing out there for you to use on that. Now, you also need to make sure all your users are um, enabled within Entra ID, formerly Azure Active Directory. You wanna make sure the Copilot capabilities are enabled in your tenant. You want to make sure that you use Dataverse and Dataverse is enabled on your tenant. And uh, as Crystal said earlier, there's some other requirements on having English US right now. And then Microsoft is slowly releasing it to the other regions and the other uh, availability regions within Microsoft 365. And that'll all be there soon. Now, the other thing is that you want to think about setting up what we like to call a center of excellence program, specifically around Copilot. And this Power Platform Copilot Center of Excellence is a program that builds off of an internal team of experts around the Copilot functionality of Power Platform. You know, this program aims to ensure that all Copilot related activities are aligned with your organization's goals. And then this team is responsible for developing best practices, creating training materials, offering guidance to anybody who wants to adopt it through the organization's developers or citizen integrators. And an effective COE or um, center of excellence, specifically around Copilot, can help your organization reduce the development time on your app developments and your workflow developments, increase the efficiency of it, and improve the overall quality of your Power Platform solutions. And it also can ensure that your Copilot related activities are in compliance with your sta industry standards and your company policies and your security and your data loss prevention policies as well. 
So at this point, um, Michael, I'm going to pass it back off to you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, guys. What a what a lovely little deep dive into Copilot. Thanks for co-piloting the session together. Okay, worst joke I'm going to make all day. We can move on now. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. There we go. Hey, guys, we have an opportunity for you to win something, something. We're doing something called Biz Apps Palooza 2024 Community Focused Technology Event focused on educating attendees on the Microsoft Power Platform and Dynamics 365 set of services. This is going to be uh, an event that's going to be happening at the office, the uh, Toronto office of Microsoft. Um, we'd love to have you there. We, it's one, an event we're very excited about. And you have an opportunity to win a free ticket. You see the QR code on the right side of the screen. The first five people to hit to uh, follow along, to, uh, to, to do the QR code, uh, to follow that link and sign up for our newsletter, you get a free ticket to BizApps Palooza 2024 on April 26th in the Microsoft Canada headquarters in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We'd love to see you there. You're going to see some familiar faces. You'll probably see these two. I don't know that you'll see me. I'm a little, I'm in a different part of the country, but you'll definitely see those two. Um, and it's, it's going to be a really great time. Uh, anything to add, uh, Rez, uh, about BizApps Palooza? Anything? I know this is kind of like your baby and anything to, to, to add to it? No, no. Um, CreoSpark is one of the main sponsors there. And um, we're going to have some fantastic speakers um, speaking on the Power Platform and Dynamics 365. So encompassing all of the Microsoft Biz apps that hopefully everybody here on the webinar is using in some manner or another. It's a great learning experience and some quality speakers. Absolutely, absolutely. And like I said, first five people to sign up for our newsletter after following the QR code get a free ticket to this. Uh, we will reach out to you if you are uh, one of the five winners and let you know beforehand. We love to see you there. Uh, I'm gonna leave that up for just another about 10 seconds, give people an opportunity to sign up for it. I wish I could go to this, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I uh, being being so far away from all, all from uh, from 95% of the company, I don't get to hang out with them in person a whole lot. Um, but I think you guys should take this opportunity to go learn a little bit about, a little bit more, I should say, about the Power Platform and Dynamics. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. If you'd be so kind. Uh, I've mentioned a survey before, here's your chance. I also mentioned you have something to uh, potentially to win here. So we we do this survey, uh, as I like to say, we are a culture of constant improvement. We want to make sure we're putting on the best webinars we can, uh, best talk, we'll talk about the best topics, have the best people involved, which we already do. So good, we're already one step there. We want to get your feedback. Let us know what you thought about the session today. If you think there's anything we could be adding to this, uh, if there's a particular topic or session you want to see, let us know. We'll work that into our calendar. We've got a lot of really fun topics coming up uh, this year, so definitely stay tuned for that. But if you follow that QR code, or that link, uh, you should it should take you to the survey. Let us know what you think. It enters you into a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. We do that drawing quarterly, so we'll probably do that one uh, March or April. Uh, that drawing probably the April for the first quarter. That would make sense. So uh, yeah, definitely sign up for that. Let us know what you think about it. We want to get your feedback there. And with that, let's go to the next slide, which I believe is the Q&A. Uh, we had a question. Someone might have answered it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, Crystal already answered it. Thank you. I'm going to say it out loud just so everybody gets to hear it, though. Uh, does Copilot only use Dataverse tables as the data repository for a Power App, or can it use another storage system, for example, Excel, on-prem systems, etc.? And yes, I answered the, can, the Copilot control in Canvas app. You can connect it to other data sources, so you can use other data sources other than Dataverse. Excellent, excellent. There we go. All right, guys, this is your opportunity. If you uh, if you have any more co-pilot questions or Power Platform questions, let us know. We like to play a fun game called Stump the Expert, so ask ask the questions that you can. Obviously, related to our topic today, uh, we like to uh, we like to make sure we're getting some fun answers out of the people that we've got going. Why not pick their brains? You know, learn a little learn a little bit more than you've already learned today, which was already a lot. My brain's very full, and I have a very big head. So that was very hard to do. I appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, not a lot of questions coming in. That's okay. Um, if you guys check out the chat as well, I mentioned uh, meant to mention there are links there to um, some of our other community events that we're doing, including Biz Apps Palooza. You can check out more about it. Uh, you can also check out um, our mailing list, more events that we do. We're always here the last Thursday of the month. We're very lucky to be here on the leap day today. Um, you know, never happens. So happy to be there. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in, so I think we're okay to, to wrap up for now. I want to say thank you to everybody who's be, who, who's joined us today. This was a really fun session. Uh, Copilot is, of course, the new fancy toy, and there's so much to dive into about it. 
Um, I hope you guys had a blast today. Uh, we've got another great session coming up next month. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, you'll, you'll get a little ping about it next, uh, next time. But anyway, Rez, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure having you two guys around. Love having you. To everyone who's, who's still here, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day, week, month, year, and we will see you all down the road. Take it easy, everybody.